Here we go. So there it is. It's right in there. Um, the picture of the cat, the white icon. And you go into there and you can see that it's kind of a theme too. So you can launch apps out of there, but it's still a beta. It's not my theme. It's a guy named Wind Warrior, so I just thought I'd show you that. So let's just say I wanted to edit that. I wanted to edit um, the files in there to change that application around. So I would go to private var stash applications and it's taking a minute to load. Once in a while your machine might get hung up and you know you might need to reload it or something. So here the apps are. You got App Store, Calculator, Categories, uh, Maps, all that stuff. So if I want to edit the Snow Leopard app for instance, here it is. You just go in there and you can see all these files pertaining to that app. Um, as for the standard apps on the iPod, let's say I wanted to edit um, the App Store, like the icon for it. You go in here and there's this thing that here says icon, PNG. You can change that and that'll change the icon, I believe. And then there's just a bunch of other PNG images that you can also edit. So that's how you edit an app. Generally not something you're going to be wanting to do, but hey, it's there. So that's private var stash applications with the dot whatever, um, you know, letter code at the end of that. And so that's how you edit those. And let's say you wanted to edit something off of the app store that can be deleted. So it's not really a permanent app. You would go into, I believe, mobile applications. And here they are. They're all just letter codes. Um, you can click on it, and in here you can see, so, for instance, this one is Facebook app, uh, and you can edit stuff in there as well. Generally, not something you're going to be wanting to edit, but it's there. So, private var mobile applications, those are the less permanent apps. Um, and another thing that some people might want to do, this is used for both um, the Windows 7 theme that I have that I showed in another video, and for an app or program that merges the um, iPod like on the iPhone for the iPod Touch so you can see I've got songs and videos in the same thing for the iPod Touch um, to do stuff like that often you're gonna need a deb file so dot deb and you would put that into the TMP folder put that in there and um, you can right click on it and or oh, never mind not right click you you go control T and you can enter um, a command so you can put it into a lot of times it's the TMP folder and also the main page so for instance uh, I right, never mind about that you can here, we'll try it. Control T, and that will bring up a command prompt. So you can put in, I put in all these different commands, D package, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes you need those, and so just to let you guys know, um, you can use a command prompt by clicking on a file and hitting Control T, and that's a command prompt. I'm guessing the T is like terminal or something like that. I'm not really sure. So that's a lot of the stuff about um, the inside of your iPod and things you might want to edit. We'll just go through these folders. As you can see, most of them don't have anything in them at all. So uh, we'll go from the bottom. VM, nothing in there. TMP has a few things in there, particularly Cydia stuff. Stash, there's a lot of stuff in there. So themes. Wallpaper is, I believe... Uh, that is the wallpaper stuff that's in your settings, ringtones and all that stuff. So, some stuff you want. A lot of the stuff you want to edit is in stash. Spool doesn't have anything. Run. I don't even know what's in there. Generally, don't edit anything you don't know. So, um, for the most part, the only folders that you're gonna want to be editing are stash, TMP. 
and mobile. Other than that, there's generally not anything you want to mess with. So on that note, the video is over and I will just say that you do not want to do anything with your iPod that you don't know what you're doing. Don't edit anything unless you need to because that can end up screwing up your iPod in which case you'll need to restore it and that is a pain. So I hope this video helped you out. Um, just giving a brief overview of SSHing and how useful it is. So if you thought this was useful, then rate, comment, and subscribe. See you guys later.